what's going on everybody welcome back to another episode um so this was a tough game tough game to watch so the pistons fall on the road to the cleveland cavaliers 113 to 101 we're gonna start with the recap right we're gonna start with the recap so first things first the story of this game was turnovers the pistons had way too many unforced by the way unforced turnovers it was just sloppy sloppy handling of the ball it just it just it was hard to watch especially in the first half they had way too many i think they had double digit turnovers i believe they had 11 turnovers in the first half second half they cleaned it up and that's why they were able to kind of hang with the Cavs in the second half they got this lead even down to about four points in at the end of the third quarter before balloon back up the double digits to close the quarter but that was the story of the game first half they were scoring well um they were knocking down shots. They were giving up easy shots, though, to the Cavaliers because of those turnovers that we talked about. It was just all around a very sloppy basketball game. The Pistons had their chances to get back into it. They were hanging around. Their effort defensively was there. Um, the execution wasn't always there defensively, but the effort was there. That's one thing that's been constant is the effort defensively, so I have to give them that. But they have to improve on their handling of the basketball. So let's get into individual play. Let's start with Kate. So Kate last game, had a very slow start offensively. That was not the case tonight. Tonight, he scored the first seven points for the Pistons. And he was cooking early, getting to his spots, getting to that mid-range, posting up smaller guys, and he had it going. Um, but, <laughs> once again, those turnovers, he had a lot of unforced turnovers where he was just dribbling the ball off of his foot, um, getting caught in the air. There was even one, I believe, in the second half where he actually tried to, he was caught and he had to keep his pivot foot down because he picked up the ball and he tried to throw it off glass and catch it and dunk it like he was LeBron or Victor with Miyama or somebody. And it's just like, hey, that's not even your game, you know? Um, so I, I think Kay was trying to do a little bit too much tonight. I think he he really, he really wants to have a winning season. Like that's one thing you can't question about him is his effort. He wants to win. He, you could see him barking at guys whenever somebody will miss a defensive assignment. He will bark at them um, to start the game again. Just like last game, he was, you know, from the first play of the game, he was into it. He was barking at guys, trying to get them going, right? But I think he was just trying to do too much. He was trying to do a little bit too much. I think he noticed that he may have felt he needed to carry the load offensively. Um, but he just tried to do a little bit too much. Some things out of his scope that he doesn't usually do that makes him who he is right um so that was a story with Cade. i i really honor and acknowledge and appreciate his effort because he really is playing hard even defensively he's moving his feet he's keeping his hands up um he's play, just playing smart defense you know he got caught a couple times out of position but you know overall defensively he was there it was just the turnovers and it wasn't just him but you know we're going to get to other guys k finished with 33 points six assists four rebounds and nine turnovers so once again those turnovers for Cade, it really really hurt the pistons tonight um and that was a difference in the game you know that was a difference in the game because that's what kept us from being able to get back into it we, we really couldn't make a run because every time we try to inch our way closer we turn the ball over careless turn over here careless turn over there which allowed the Cavs to get open shots they were just they were they were hoisting three after three after three after three after three i think four of the first five or six possessions to, <laughs> were three pointers to start the game so they were really taking advantage of uh the pistons turnovers and that was a big difference so Cade got to get those turnovers down he had three more turnovers and assists tonight um got to be a little bit better at the basketball that takes us to Jaden. Jaden is getting better and better so Jaden played a pretty good game he had 22 points Five rebounds, three assists, two turnovers on 50% shooting in 30 minutes. So Jaden is continuing to get better and better, right? He had a few plays tonight where he was a little bit out of control, but he's continuing to try to do what he does best, which is get downhill, um, you know, force the action when necessary, when needed, and then make the right play, whether it's at the rim or whether it's making the right pass to the right guy. And he's also learning how to use his body better and being able to get up into bigs. Tonight, he was able to get into Evan Mobley, get into his ribs on the way up and really allow him or disable him from being able to go vertical to block the shot. And that's what Jaden seems to be understanding how to do is using his body better, not just relying on a speed, but also using his strength, right? And being able to really punish guys at the rim, even guys who may be taller than him because he's such a strong guard. And tonight he was able to do that. So tonight he had a pretty good game. You know, he didn't try to do too much too often. 
only had two turnovers, right? So he wasn't really the problem when it came to our turnovers tonight. It was really a lot of the other guys. But yeah, Jaden had a pretty good game. I want to see him continue to grow. His three ball was pretty good. He went two for five. So not great, but not bad, right? He's showing he's able to knock it down when he's open, right? If he's open, more times than not, he's going to knock that down. So just continue to get better. Continue to do what you do best. And I also like how they continue to stagger the minutes with uh, Kay Cunningham and Jaden Ivey at the point guard position. It's something I talked about uh, numerous times when people were talking about starting uh, Malik Beasley at the two. And I just always felt that Jaden Ivey should be starting at the two with Kate at the one. And when Kate goes out, Ivey can move over to the one and then have Beasley coming at the two. And that's exactly what they've been doing game after game. So I don't think there's any question now that Jaden Ivey and Kate Cunningham can start together and play well together. They both had solid offensive games you know even though k had 33 those turnovers that's why i say solid they can definitely coexist they just have to learn in how to play off each other um and we have the right coach to help them do that so i was really happy with what i saw from ivy tonight jalen Duren didn't have a great game um he seemed to really struggle with the length of evan mobley and jared allen as most big men do um they held him in check tonight he had five points it's only seven rebounds he had five assists a steal a block and a turnover um, 50 percent shooting this is the second game in a row where he's had four field goal attempts so i, I want to see him get more field goal attempts we haven't really seen a lot of uh the pick and roll action with him and Cade. so i really hope they get back to that i feel like tonight the pistons also too as a side note their identity is defense and i felt like once they saw that cleveland was trying to make it a track meet they tried to adapt to what cleveland was doing instead of just playing their game and that was the problem. The Pistons don't have the personnel as currently constructed to try to get into shootouts with teams. That's just not how they're built right now, right? We're more of a slower paced offensive half court offense. And then when we turn you over, then we're looking to get running and things like that. But Cleveland missed shot. They're taking the ball and pushing the ball and trying to get a uh, transition three. That's just how they play. The Pistons don't play that way. And I felt like once they saw that Cleveland was going to try to outscore them, they tried to outscore Cleveland. They tried to play Cleveland's game and they kind of got away from who they were. So I hope the Pistons are able to get back to that. The half court offense where you got the pick and roll going and you got player movement, you got guys cutting and guys setting hard screens and finding the open man with the ball in Cade's hands out of the pick and roll. I think that's the best offense for the Pistons, right? And then just strap up defensively. But they kind of got, they kind of fell into the trap of trying to outdo the opposing team and what they do best. And more times than not, you're not going to win that way. Tim Hardaway had nine points, three rebounds, one assist, turnover, um, and 23 minutes. So he played solid. You know, he had he had a pretty solid game. He didn't really do too much. He was a negative 20, which isn't good at all. Um, defensively, I do worry about him. Ha didn't really give us much defensively. A lot of open shots off of rotations where he wasn't rotating properly, which led to the open three for guys. Um, and he just, I know he, he's a streaky shooter, but sometimes just because you have the ball in your hands doesn't mean you need to shoot it. You, like I, I need to see him move the ball more i need to see him when he gets it don't just always look to pull the trigger because he's not good enough of a shooter to have that type of range to be able to just shoot it whenever he catches it if it was a malik beasley who had that mindset who's a consistent shooter that's a little bit different we'll get to him later but tim hardaway i need him to be a little less trigger happy and just try to move the ball more whenever you whenever you get it if it's supposed to come back to you it will but you have to move it first There's so many times in the shot i hate seeing um, players take shots with 20 seconds left on the shot clock or 19 seconds left on the shot clock, especially if it's not an open shot. It's like, what are you doing? It just doesn't make sense. It's a bad possession. And it allows the other team to get out in transition. So I need Tim Hardaway to do a little bit better, to be better than just moving the ball, moving the ball. I, I, I got to see more of that with him. Tobias Harris also didn't play well tonight. He had 10 points, five rebounds, five assists, one steal, a block. So he tried to be effective in other ways. Um, he did go two for three from three point, but he shot three for nine overall. So 33% overall. Last game, he had 13 points. This game, he had 10 points. So we need him to step it up um, offensively. I will say this about Tobias. He's a better post defender now than he used to be when he was first here as a piss in the first go around. We had him in 2016. And the reason I say that is because there were times when he was trying to guard Mobley. He was guarding Mobley in the post. And even though Mobley has a three or four inch height advantage, Tobias was able to stand him up when he would try to post him. So that's something Tobias did not used to be able to do. But Tobias was able to force him into tough shots out of the post because he was not able to move Tobias. And we know Evan Mobley isn't a huge guy, right? But he is a lot taller than Tobias. So I was happy to see that Tobias was able to hold his own 
in the post defensively against Evan Mobley because when he was here years ago, he would get abused in the post. What comes to mind for me with regards to that is when the Pistons played the Cavaliers in the 2016 playoffs. And every time the Pistons would go on a run, right? Um, LeBron would dump the ball down to Kevin Love and he would just abuse Tobias Harris. He was just too big. Tobias Harris was not strong enough. And that was what I was looking for tonight. So for, to see that, if there's one positive that I got from Tobias tonight, it was just the fact that he was able to defend the post a lot better than I thought he would be. And he's going to have to be able to do that if he's going to be the starting four for this team. So I'm looking for that too. As far as uh, bench guys, uh, not really much to mention here. Um, Malik Beasley did play well. He had 13 points, four rebounds, one assist, a block and a turnover in 29 minutes. He shot three for six from three, five for 11 overall. He made some timely buckets for us in that first quarter when Cleveland was really trying to put us in the dirt early. He made a lot of big shots when we needed them. And he's really just showing his value. We really need a player like him who can space the floor and, uh, and give Cade some room to operate and give Ivy driving lanes to get to the hoop so that way defenses have to stay honest, right? He's proven over and over again since he's been here that, if he, that he's a knockdown shooter. And he's continued to be that for this team. So I have no qualms with Malik Beasley. I think he played a pretty good game tonight off the bench. And I'm hoping to see more of the same. Fontecchio, he had five points, two rebounds, uh, turnover in 20 minutes. So he did a little bit better than last game because last he couldn't do worse. Last game he had zeros across the board. <laughs> so five points in 20 minutes, two rebounds, no assists, no steals, no blocks. I still need more from him. He still has not been able to find a rhythm. Um, it looks like he's thinking again. It looks like he's not hes not being aggressive. He's just trying to make sure he fits in. And that was what I was saying was the issue with him last season is that he's always worried about stepping on somebody's toes instead of just playing his game and being aggressive. So we got to have more from Fontecchio. We need him to get the ball up. We need him to get more shots up. He had four shots, one for four from three. But it's just the looks. He passed up on a few looks that I thought he could have taken. And I think it's just because he's thinking too much. I'm not sure if it's a confidence thing or what, but... I gotta see more from him. In 20 minutes, you gotta give me one or five points and two rebounds. You, you just gotta give me more than that. Ron Holland got a little bit of run. He played 17 minutes, had four points, seven rebounds, one assist, and a block, and a turnover in 17 minutes. So he didn't play, he didn't play, but he was it wasn't bad. The thing about Ron Holland is that when he's in the game, he finds a way to be impactful. Right? He he doesn't really hurt you unless he's just getting up a lot of threes and he's not making any of them. He shot two tonight, he didn't make any of them. So he's 0 for 5 to start the season because last game he was 0 for 3. So he's got to continue to work on that shot. It's going to take time for it to translate into games, right? But as long as he's not taking a ton of threes and he's just shooting the ones that are open, I'm okay with that. As long as he's continuing to make an impact in the open court, creating his own offense off of his defense, which he did tonight, he clamped up Donovan Mitchell pretty well when he was guarding him. And I think that's going to be Ron's strength. It's just his ability to guard multiple positions. He can guard one through four and even some small fives, even as a rookie, even without his body having been filled out. That's going to be his superpower, his ability to guard multiple positions and his ability to get out in transition, create his own offense through his defense, and then be able to help the team that way. So wasn't a terrible game from him. I do need him to watch his temperament, though. This is the second game in a row now where he's kind of gotten into it with guys and getting technical fouls. So I love the, I love the fire, but we don't need a Draymond Green type of situation over here. You know what I mean? We don't we don't need it to that extent. I hope he's able to kind of harness that energy and that anger and that passion and just kind of put it into the game, infuse it into the game, and don't worry so much about the opposing players or referees. You know, the Pistons do seem more engaged as a team, even from the bench. You see guys really trying to be encouraging and getting off the bench and barking at guys when they're making knocking down shots and things like that. So that was good. To, it's good to see that this this team actually does care. But now it just needs to translate into execution. We got to cut down those turnovers. So that's pretty much it for this game. Once again, the Pistons lose to the Cavaliers 101 to 113. The Pistons next game is tomorrow against the Boston Celtics, and they will be back at home for that one. So the schedule has been brutal. This will be three straight teams to open the season against playoff teams. And this is and now we're playing the champs. So it doesn't get much easier in the immediate future. But as long as we continue to see growth from this team, that's all we want to see long term. I still think the Pistons are going to have a great second half to the season just because there's so many moving parts right now that need to come together to make a sound team and they need to gel. And it's going to take time, especially with them being so young. But what did you guys see tonight that I missed? I know there's a ton to take away from this game. So let me know what you guys thought about this game down in the comments and let's talk about it. You can catch me back here tomorrow night post game. As always, appreciate you hanging with your boy. And until next time, Detroit versus everybody. Peace. I'm on my way up and I'm not gonna stop. We headed straight to the top in the low. I gotta face it. I
got no time 